Kiki. Hey guys, Chris again from ClassicVWBugs.com and happy May 2021 Mother's Day weekend. And yeah, guys, uh, give a hug to your mom. And if you got a bug, take her out this weekend, take her out to lunch, take her out to dinner. And if she's been a real supporting mom and a lovable mom, that's what we want in life. And uh, happy Mother's Day to all the amazing mothers out there. And uh, I'm here to bring you some updates, guys, and see what's going on. So, topic of this uh, vlog is going to be, let me roll up my window. I'm in my 61 convertible. Thank God it's spring and we're finally getting some greenery and some sun. A little overcast right now, but it's all good. I'd take it over winter any day. But uh, topic of this conversation is youngins or young, the youth, getting involved in vintage Volkswagens. Now, I get questions like this a few times where, hey, Chris, what do you think? You know, how much longer do you think the bug's going to be popular? Do you think the youngsters are going to be interested in them? You know, is it sooner or later, you know, when the baby boomers pass on or, you know, they can no longer drive these or no longer in the hobby? And we're already starting to see that. Many shops are, are closing up because of, uh, you know, it's got, these guys are retiring. So is there a youth out there that's coming up that's going to keep this bug alive and keep it on the road? Uh, I think so. Uh, I think the youth really likes the character of the bug. Again, it's a very iconic car. It stands out amongst others. When I go to car shows and there's young kids there and they don't know a classic car from, from nothing, you know, and but when they see a bug, some of them, which is shocking, some of them don't even know that it is a bug. So that's really scary. <laughs> uh, but they like the way it looks. They love the round features, the fenders. It's it's cute, and I think that's kind of you know what a lot of the, the the young generation likes coming up. So I think that's a, a positive note. And I will say, I just recently had a young buyer off of my find a bug program my find a bug program is when I find a bug for you so if you're looking for a bug you don't want to wait the two years that it takes for me to restore or, or wait in line to, to get to your car when you get it back for restoration or you don't have the budget for a restoration because it is costly then I have my find a bug program which I've been picking up again and getting more aggressive with so um, find a bug is great you know it's definitely uh, something that if you're in a 10 grand realm, 15 grand, up to 35 or even more, um, you know, depending on what year and make model you want, a find a bug through me is good because you contact me, I can search for you. I search every week for these cars. I got a good network of people that I communicate with across the country. I know what to look for. I know what the prices should be. I know what questions to ask the sellers. Uh, I know how to vet the sellers. You know, and it's kind of peace of mind for you where, you know, you, you're in good hands that we're going to get you a good bug. So recently I had a young guy named Lucas out of Miami, Florida, just picked up a 72 from me. And he called me up. He said, Chris, I've always wanted a bug. And he signed up for my program. And sure enough, I had a 72 that came back, a, a car that we worked on about 10 years ago. And the couple called me up and said, hey, look, we got to sell the car. Moving on whatever the case may be. I get a lot of stories with this and we get a lot in today's day where people get their fix, they drive the car for a few years and then they're looking to move on. And so whether you got kids, you get married or you come into financial troubles. So I put the car up for sale and sure enough, I showed it to Lucas and Lucas loved the car. And he felt at ease with it because it's a car that we uh, put our hands on, we worked on. So that's always a good thing. So Lucas is, I think he's 21. Uh, forget me, forgive me, Lucas, if I'm wrong. <laughs> I'm sorry, my phone keeps moving. Um, I think he's like 20, 21, maybe 22. Miami kid, awesome kid, bought the bug. And I'm so happy that a young kid has gotten out one of my cars. Because uh, in the end, we want to keep the dream alive, right? We want to keep this hobby going. And so I'm hoping uh, that this will continue. On another note, when it comes to youth, I had a 19-year-old email me and say, Hey, Chris, I love the Beetle. I love what you do on YouTube. Can I, I, I you know, what do I got to do to get started? I'd love to have a business similar to yours, but I want to do YouTube as well. His name is Miguel, and he's out of, um, I think, San Jose. So, I'm like, okay, well, 
and the, and the youth today is so geared on YouTube. You know, uh, they say when you go into elementary schools today and you ask the little kids, you know, what do you want to be when you grow up? And so many of them are saying, um, I want to be a YouTuber. You know, I want to be on YouTube and I want to be on the internet, that kind of thing. And when I grew up, it was all about, I want to be a baseball player, I want to be a firefighter, a fireman, a, a police officer rather, <laughs> um, you know, a movie star or, or something like that, you know. And that's what it was back then. Today, it's like, I want to be a YouTuber. So being on YouTube today is, you know, it's, look, it's a platform that you can jump right in and, you know, uh, start making some videos. So Miguel asked me, he's like, look, I don't really have any camera work experience. I don't know what kind of gear to get. I don't know how to do this. I don't know how to do, I don't know how to edit, you know, all things like that. All those questions are asked are answered for you on YouTube as well. So if you put in a search on YouTube on how to do those certain things, it's going to come up. You want to know what kind of gear to get? There's going to be videos on it. You want to know what kind of editing software? There's, there's videos on it and even how to learn the editing software. So it is a process. It's not something you're going to learn overnight. Uh, but I, I tell a lot of beginning YouTube people or people who want to get on YouTube, you know, just start with your phone at first uh, and then, you know, look at your competition and see what kind of gear maybe that they're using and, and just kind of do some homework first. You've got to make mistakes. It's going to be a, a pain in the butt um, in the beginning maybe. It might be frustrating. So that's why a lot of people quit right away. I've been on YouTube for 14 years, go figure. And I've seen the ups and downs with YouTube, and I've had roller coaster ups and downs. I've, I grow, uh, you know, a, a lot of, at one period, and then I'll slow down at another period. So uh, there's never an end for YouTube. It's a journey, and you're always going to be running. It's a long marathon. Uh, so you might have some highs and lows. If you think you're going to make a lot of money on YouTube, think again. People say, oh, you have a lot of money, videos on YouTube, Chris. You must make a ton of money with YouTube. No, you don't. YouTube revenue is like this, like this. So you don't think you're getting rich on YouTube just with their ad revenue alone. No way in hell. Yes, there's those fairy tale stories. You got Mr. Beast, you got a lot of Casey Neistat, you got a lot of these YouTubers out there that, you know, they make a decent living. But that's, those are the fairy tale stories. Those are a small percentage. You use YouTube as a marketing tool. So like I use it as a marketing tool. So I don't make a lot of money with YouTube itself, but YouTube is a great marketing tool for me. So I have brought in clients. I brought in customers to my business. That's what got me to two year wait list, you know, every year for the past, I mean, geez, 10 years or so. Uh, it's what got Jerry Seinfeld in my, in my shop. He saw my YouTube channel, Fox News, USA Today. Uh, Folks World Magazine, uh, VW, um, Hot VW's Magazine, CBS This Morning, Don Daler came to my shop, all because of my YouTube channel. Uh, so you can get recognition that way, but you gotta keep at it, and there's a lot of consistency to it you gotta stay on. Um, I try to stay consistent every week, sometimes it's difficult with work, so I try to pump out a video. Um, but he also asked me, he said, you know, I'm nervous about haters <laughs> I'm nervous about people leaving me a bad comment and you know I guess the youth growing up in today's day they're growing up in tech right only tech and that's all they know and the bullying today it must be ferocious with tech because you got a bunch of these no, no offense to anybody <laughs> but you got a bunch of these jackasses out there that they're all tough behind the computer screen and all I got to tell is Miguel is, you know, look, you're going to you're gonna get them. You're going to get people that criticize you. And you got to have somewhat of thick skin when it comes into jumping into this game. Um, you know, when I first started, there was a lot of criticism about what the how-tos that I was putting out. Yeah, I put out a bunch of stinkers in the beginning. You know, I wasn't as knowledgeable as I, as I am today. So people like to pounce on that. And people are all big and, and tough behind a computer screen. And so I used to get a bunch of those haters in the beginning. And every now and then you got a, you know, a schmuck <laughs> that wants to leave me a bad comment uh, on my channel. Uh, to even today, you know, every so often you always get those people. You're not going to please everybody. Now, these haters, I will tell you this. 
Oops. Um, these guys, I give no credibility to. I do not give you the time or day. You have no clout, you have no credibility. Because for you to say some of the nasty things that you're gonna say to me or say anybody else out there, behind your computer screen, you are a joke. Most of the time, these are people that are very jealous or envious um, or just not happy people in general. And they wanna leave a bad comment to kinda of make them feel better. And you know what? It, because if you're a happy person, you got things going for you, and, and you're a good and you're a good person, and you don't want to say nasty things to anybody. I mean, you're not going to say nasty things. So happy-go-lucky people aren't going to leave a nasty comment. Deep down, these are people that got some issues, and they feel real powerful behind the computer screen, and they're mashing those key, that keyboard, and they feel all proud that they can leave and not face to face. You know how many times I tell them, "Yeah, why don't you walk into my shop and tell me and, and talk to me that way?" And they never do. So you guys have nothing, you got no spine. So Miguel, don't listen to them, you ignore them, you take the high road, all right? And it's, a, it's just what the nature of the internet is. We, we're on a planet of billions of people and everyone has a so-called comment or some, a, a voice. So some people just wanna be nasty, again, because I think they got more issues behind them uh, than anything else. So uh, yeah, I, get, I don't even respond to, to people like that, so. Um, and anytime I say, hey, walk into my shop, let's have a conversation, they never do. So until then, uh, I don't believe in you. And you know what? See you later. Off my shoulder. <laughs> More things in life to worry about. So, but someone like Miguel that wants to get into this business, do your homework, man. And watch as many videos as you can. You know, YouTube, again, can be a great marketing tool. Do not count on YouTube to make your money. Uh, you know, use the Volkswagens to make your money make a great product and and target the right people you know there's there are videos out there that you know they, they target a different audience yeah and they might have a hundred thousand subscribers like I don't need all those subscribers all I need is those select few that like my work and are willing to dive into a project with me and come on the journey of restoration that's all you need it's not about the numbers so you can have all the numbers in the world. I mean, I've, I've met YouTubers that got a million subscribers and they make nothing, all right? You know, you wanna keep doing fail videos and stuff like that, I mean, that's fine. You know, but in the end, it's about dollars and cents and time. Time is money. So use YouTube as a good tool. Algorithm changes every now and then. You have no control over that. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. And um, just have fun. And uh, once you're not having fun with it, then it's time to stop. So um, that's my little pep talk <laughs> when it comes to YouTube uh, and, and trying to start a business online because we're coming into this time now where it's, everyone thinks that they can make a business on YouTube. And you probably can. I mean, most people can. You know, the, the, the tools are there. We have the best time in the world today to start your own business. And I tell it to a lot of people, you know, if you have a phone and you got an internet connection, you can start a business tomorrow. So, you know, when I see people, you know, wanting to protest their company or complaining that they can't get a job or they're complaining that they can't make any money, and I know there's a lot of circumstances out there, um, but we have education and we have tools at our fingertips today that we never had, ever. So, I mean, I always tell people the first thing you want to do, like if you want to start a business online, flip. I mean, you go to, you know, discount stores like job lots or something or you know whenever there's sales at stores that was the old school way people did them on eBay you buy that stuff real cheap and you turn around and you flip it on eBay or Amazon uh, you know it's it's just like that and you don't need a website so Miguel I'm so happy that you're getting into the Volkswagen world and we need younger guys like you to start making videos and start starting a Volkswagen business and working on the classics uh, whether it's Carmen Gears or buses or Beatles or whatever you're getting into, keep it up because I'm, I'm rooting for you, man. And uh, you need any help at all from me, you know where to reach me. You email me already. You can even call me. And I'd be more than happy to help you because I've been around the bush <laughs> for a while now. And, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's what it is. So I wouldn't want it any other way. But um, anyway, guys. That's that video for today. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, 
you know, I, a little off topic from, from Volkswagens and stuff, but I just feel like I got these younger kids that have been reaching out to me uh, in the past uh, about getting into Volkswagens. I think it's really cool. And uh, I think we should be rooting them on because they're the ones that are going to keep these cars alive. And, um, and hopefully, you know, still driving on the road and, and seeing them, you know. So, but guys, uh, that's that video for uh, this week. Vlog number 23. Man. May 2021. Guys, if there's any shows coming around, I mean, New York is not seeing many shows as of late. I, I don't see anything listed. I think the Terryville Bug Affair uh, in Connecticut is doing a show this summer. Uh, but I, I haven't heard much. There are a few cars and coffees that are going on, which are like those Sunday meets in the morning, like 9 to 12 or 8 to 11 in the morning. But guys, if there's any shows out there that you want me to give a shout out to, you know, let me know because uh, we, we got to get the shows going. Uh, New York is still kind of like in a lockdown kind of thing and people still, you know, being cautious. But there's a lot of states out there that have opened up, uh, like Florida and I think even Arizona or some, and stuff. So if, you, if stuff has opened up and you want me to shout out, you know, give me a holler. I'd, I'd love to. You know, again, keep this, keep this animal going. So um, that's it. Please be sure to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. And I'll be bringing you VW content like this each and every week. And guys, please, for the price of a cup of coffee, uh, there's a donation link below in the description where you throw a couple bucks towards us and a PayPal link. And it just keeps the content going, keeps me doing these videos each and every week. Whatever you can afford is fine with me. A couple bucks, that's cool. And um, I would really, really appreciate it. And uh, that is it. Happy Mother's Day to all the great mothers out there. And uh, keep on dubbing. I'll see you next time. Beep, beep.